Sorry it's been so long since I've posted a new lesson, but things get very busy at the end of a school year when you're a teacher, so I apologize. One of the coolest techniques I've seen lately is what is referred to as dancing paint. The technique basically involves using the pulsating action of a woofer, or low-end audio speaker, to make paint jump and dance around on a flexible surface while you snap the action. The results are often abstract images with incredible lines, shapes, and colors, all frozen at a split second in a single frame. There are several different ways to photograph dancing paint, and the method you see here is just one variation of a common theme. I decided to get my honors photo class at the high school involved in this project when one of my students, Alyssa, chose dancing paint as her theme for an assignment. Before we began, we needed a speaker, so I sacrificed my JBL Creature woofer for the job. The low end of a music track causes the speaker to pulsate and push air through the port on the other side. I knew this was going to be a messy project and I didn't want to ruin my speakers, so the very first thing I did was cover it with clear plastic wrapping. I had read that a balloon stretched across the speaker was one way to provide a flexible surface upon which to pour the paint. So I got a large balloon and blew it up first to help stretch out the rubber, then deflated it, sliced it lengthwise, and stretched it across a 4 by 5 inch sheet film holder using duct tape. Next, we set the speaker on a stool several feet in front of a black seamless background and hooked the woofer up to an iPhone. Black's a good choice for the background because it helps make the brightly colored paint really pop. Next, we chose a song with a lot of bass notes and cranked it up to an almost deafening level. If you try this at home, be sure to warn your family and neighbors first, or they'll probably think you've gone out of your mind when they hear it. I'll give you an idea what this sounds like briefly here, and then cut it off for the rest of the lesson. There are a lot of suggestions online of what sort of paint would work best and what consistency, so we began by using straight tempera paint from a tube. This didn't work so well, so we tried neon acrylic paint and thickened it up by mixing it with Mod Podge acrylic gel medium to varying consistency until we had an effect we liked. Other considerations were the colors of paint and whether or not to mix different colors together during the same shooting session. Alyssa first used the on-camera flash, but had a serious delay between the time she pressed the shutter release button to when the camera actually fired, so I hooked up a single studio flash head to provide the light source. Because it's stronger and recycles quickly, there was no longer any delay and Alyssa was able to get some decent shots. For tips on how to use studio flash, see Lesson 25. Another consideration was getting close enough to the action to record it and eliminating unwanted areas in the composition. This was a very small area to work with, so by shooting with her lens in macro mode, Alyssa was able to crop out most of the rest of her frame and capture all of the paint as it danced wildly and randomly around. It's also a good idea to use manual focus, as opposed to autofocus, to ensure that your camera will fire at the exact moment you want it to. Autofocus, like using on-camera flash in auto mode, delay things considerably. We all had a blast using this technique and I'm looking forward to continuing experimenting with it as time goes on. Ultimately, I'd like to create a larger shooting surface to work with and mix more colors within the same shot. Next year I'll probably have all of my students give this technique a try and I'll share the results with you in a future episode. As you can see in these stunning examples that no two images are alike and each one has its own distinctive look. I want to point out that most of these images I'm sharing were shot by a number of different photographers who have posted them on the internet, and I'd like to publicly thank all of them for their creative contributions. I'd also like to thank my students, Alyssa, photographer, Lida, paint pourer, and Anne, DJ, for making this episode possible. The dancing paint process is easy to do and totally unpredictable, which makes it so much fun. Well, that's about it for this lesson. Be sure to join us on the Photography 101 Facebook page to share your thoughts and images. And if by chance you give Dancing Paint a try, be sure to share your images with us. We'd love to see them. Until next time, goodbye.